Meanwhile, thousands of refugees are now starting to return home, hoping that the situation is safe. They're trying to recreate some kind of semblance of normality. But often, what awaits them is nothing but wounds after five months of intensive fighting. There are also unexploded mines and other ordinances that are littering the streets of many residential areas. The anti-government fighters are helping to clear these up. We caught up with the team back at their barracks, many of whom told us they are doubtful that the ceasefire will last. Yesterday we buried a friend. He was killed when a tank fired from 100 meters away. His nickname was Electron. The last night before the battle, we sat together and smoked in the trench. In the morning he died. For five long months, this has been the brutal reality for these frontline soldiers. They've stared death in the face and ache with the pain of losing comrades. It's very difficult to explain. If you weren't with us, you wouldn't understand. It's like losing a hand or when they tear your heart out. Anger and faith have kept Svarnoy strong. A father of four, he's doubtful the ceasefire will last. We have something they don't have, and they have something that we don't have. We have faith in victory and that we're fighting for our land. They have the equipment, simple metal, but no soul. Svardanoi volunteered for a fighting unit, knowing very well that the chances of being killed, injured or kidnapped were high. I'm ashamed of the actions of the Ukrainian army. We didn't come to Western Ukraine and begin destroying what they built. They came to our land. Gvost has gotten used to sleeping with grenades next to his bed and fears that death is never far away. This bed you are sitting on is the bed of my friend Doc. Just today he came back from the hospital. Both of his legs were injured. Gvost too is unsure the truce will last. There's been too much killing for either side to trust the other, he says. He never told his parents he was here, as he didn't want them to worry. And he also hasn't spoken with his wife and three children in a very long time. His baby daughter is just eight months old. People who have never seen this think war is like TV. You watch and forget because there's some entertainment show later. Here, everything is reality. Here, people are dying in front of your eyes. Antonia had never picked up a gun until this war. The months away from his wife and two children were often intolerable. They are far away, and I'm talking to them when it's possible to turn on the phone. When we are going to the front, the phones are always off. He too has watched his friends die on the battlefield. Here you understand who your real friends are. All those who are with me here are my brothers, those who will put their bodies in front of me, so I won't get shot. Unlike his comrades, Antonia thinks this time the truce might last, that finally the Ukrainian government realizes it has no other choice. Every fighter here is a volunteer, responding, they say, to the call of their hearts to protect their family, homes and land. For now, things are quiet. But the air is thick with the unanswered question if it's game over, or if these soldiers will be forced back to the front. Paulus RT, Donetsk, Eastern Ukraine. The European security watchdog, which helped broker the truce, has released details of the peace plan agreed to in Minsk on Friday. First, the sides agreed to an immediate end to fighting. In a big concession by Kiev, the plan also grants special status to the restive regions, with early local elections set to be held. Also, the truce would be observed by European monitors. Kiev and anti-government leaders also vowed to exchange all detainees and pull back all heavy military hardware. Foreign Affairs analyst Nebojo Malic told us what he thinks is behind the Ukrainian government's concessions. The forces dispatched at the end of June after another false ceasefire to take these regions by force have suffered a catastrophic defeat on a tactical, strategic and operational level. You've, you've had thousands of these people surrounded and um, captured their equipment. Essentially, the Ukrainian army, um, the, the regular army, has been soundly defeated, uh, as have been the Nazi battalions as well as the National Guard. And essentially, at the point where the Ukrainian military front started collapsing, uh, Kiev suddenly decided to accept a truce. So at this point, I believe they're trying to hold on to this ceasefire uh, to give themselves a chance to regroup and figure out where to go next, because obviously their strategy of repressing these people by force has failed.